Hello everyone, I am Jason Bjorklund of the Iowa Golf Association staff and once again thank you for taking some time out of your day to watch a tutorial video. Here we're going to be talking about the Gin Handicap Program software version management side and specifically a few features within that. We're, in a, we're going to do different segments of videos here. In this short video we're going to talk specifically about player management, uh, a few features within player management, adding golfers, editing info, and score maintenance. We'll move on to activating and inactivating golfers. There's a couple ways to do it. I'll show you the way that uh, I guess I have a preference for. And then we'll conclude by talking about default tees and how to set them up for your golfers and what, what in fact default tees mean. So to get started we need to go ahead and launch our management side of the program, GHP management. This is password protected enter that in and we get to our main screen of the handi Gin Handicap Program Management. On the left side here we have a lot of green buttons and as I said in future videos we're going to talk more about uh, different options within these. Today we're going to start with player management and we're going to first tackle how to add a golfer. Well we see our roster here now of already golfers that are at our club and right now it's showing all services so I can see I have 65 players in my test club 44 of them being active and 21 being inactive. This drop down will allow me to pare it down closer to if I just wanted to say just show me the men's 18 roster or women's 18 roster, any service I have set up within my club there. Uh, but for our first example here we want to just add a new golfer down to the bottom of the screen here in about the direct center you'll see a button that says add a member. We want to click that. We get an add a player window and we're prompted with the opening question that says, does this player have a GIN number? It defaults to no, but if they had a number established at another club, whether it's in the Iowa Golf Association or a different state golf association that has GIN, uh, we could say yes. Then this field opens up to where we could enter what their number was. We still need to go ahead and put in their first and last name, and proceed as is and if their first and last name matches that number you put in it will go ahead and add the golfer with their already established number and their scoring records and they'll be able to resume as they had it before. For our example we'll say no we'll give this golfer a new number he's never had an established gin number before. First and last name are required you don't have to have a local number. Not too many clubs use that feature. Um, it's You can assign a local number to them if, if for organization on your side if each one has an ad individual identifiable number. Uh, we do need to have a gender for them. A male golfer. And I'm going to have it. He's going to keep an 18 hole handicap index. The method refers to how is this golfer going to be entering their scores. Uh, ESC method would mean that it's going to ask what was your ESC score for the day. That's when the golfer has to tell the total score for posting applying ESC uh, himself. We can also do a hole-by-hole -hole option where when the golfer posts a score they're going to see a scorecard and he goes right along the lines of posting hole-by-hole uh, -hole scores. In that method ESC will be applied automatically for the golfer. I'll leave it at ESC for our example. I am next going to go down here and put in the golfer's email account. A golfer that has an email uh, listed here is going to receive emails on the 1st and the 15th when handicap indexes are updated with their latest scores and their latest index. Moving a little further along here, down at the bottom left we see available services. I can put this golfer in my men's 18 hole service or my women's 18 hole service. Obviously Joe is a, a male golfer so I select the men's and then I arrow that available service over to my selected side saying that's where I want to put him in. Then I take a step back up top right above our available services and once I have put a service in the selected side I have a membership type options. And for the IGA we have two types of members regular golfers who are 18 years of age or older and junior golfers 17 and younger. Junior golfers are not charged to our host, to our member clubs so if they uh, if you do have a junior make sure you select obviously the type to say junior but you also need to go up here 
in the birth date and get that golfer's correct birth date in there. That way you don't need to update your roster each year as that golfer ages and think, do it, did he turn 18 this year? Do I need to change him to a regular member? It will be done automatically. For our purposes here, I'll leave him at our regular uh, regular member. Service uh, default is set for our default tee, and as I said, in a few moments we're going to get to default tees, so I'll leave it for, let's say Joe is, his default tee is going to be the service default, and that'll make sense in just a few moments. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I get a message here, there's another player in the system with this name. I think I did this in a previous example, so I'm going to just change his name real quick here to uh, Bob Golfer. Say OK, and now Bob has been added to my roster. Um, it's at the bottom here, but it will be alphabetized if I click Close and Open Back Management again. So, But we can see uh, the info we entered, and we can also see the GIN number that was assigned to this golfer. Now, if he does come to you at a later time and says, you know what, I had a number that was established at a club, uh, I, I wanted that moved over here, I don't need to start over new, just call the association here. We'll be happy to run a merge. Uh, it's a very quick process, but it does have to be done on the association side of things. We'll merge those together and get his old number uh, back up and going, connected to your club. Not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and click close here. And the second thing we're going to talk about within player management is editing an individual's info. So I'll go back into player management and select any golfer. I'll go ahead and select Ernie Els for our example here. And we can see that Ernie has an address in here, but he doesn't have an email. And he said, hey, I've, I've heard that I can get my handicap updated, my handicap updates emailed to me automatically. Uh, we say, yeah. Sure can, we just need to know your email address. So he tells us his email, we put it in there, we click save, we've updated his account. Uh, in future videos, we're going to be talking more about reports. And the more info you have for a golfer, it's accessible by running reports. So uh, while address isn't a necessity for having a golfer in here and maintaining a USGA Handicap Index. It's nice to have info at a club level if you wanted to run a quick report that says I'd like to know all my active golfers and their address and their emails. And you'll be able to run it of all your active golfers. It's just a matter of do you have the info for that particular golfer for his address or his email. If not, it'll be a blank spot on the report. So uh, it, it works as a nice database feature where you can pull out the info you want. That's why I, I recommend, you know, keeping up on it, filling out your address, your email, all that stuff. It, it'll, it'll be valuable for you, not just in handicap terms, but in running reports at your club level for, for anything you might want to know about your golfers. Go ahead and click close here at the bottom. And the last thing we're going to talk about within player maintenance for this video is score maintenance. Uh, once a golfer posts a score, whether it's at a club on a on a public side of things or through his mobile app or maybe a golfer goes online to uh, gin.com and posts a score that score has been posted and it's final uh, and that golfer doesn't have any editing capabilities so from time to time you'll have a golfer come to you and say you know I, I posted an 82 I forgot to apply ESC it should have been an 81 can you fix it for me you say absolutely so we want to go into our player management and find the golfer that we're talking about. We'll find, uh, we'll pick Ernie here for our example. Once we have him selected, we can go down to the bottom and click scores, and we'll see a score history for this golfer. And let's say this 81 right here is the score in question that we were wanting to change. It's already highlighted in blue. I can move down to the bottom here and click edit, and now these fields open up for me to go ahead and make my appropriate changes. For this example, uh, 81, he forgot to apply ESC at a hole. We'll make it 80, save, and I've updated the score to reflect, reflect the par proper score for that golfer at this time. Go ahead and click close. Close again. We're out of player management, and those are the three main things in player management that this video is going to cover. Uh, we're going to move on. How to activate and inactivate golfers.
Uh, obviously at the club level you know that the IGA invoices for active golfers at each member club so it's important to maintain a, a current roster of who is active and who's inactive. In player management you will be able to see as we look click on each golfer here on the right side here are they active or not and we do have a checkbox down here at the bottom so if Steve was going to move to an inactive status I could do it within player management by finding the golfer going down here and unchecking that box of active clicking it to save and close but the way I really prefer to do it and it, it's visually a little easier to follow as well is within the club management button and we see our home club at the top and then the services of handicaps we offer here I'm in the men's 18 and I can see with a number that I have 16 inactive golfers in my men's 18 hole service and on the right side I have 35 active men so if I wanted to go ahead and say you know what uh, Steve and Phil Mickelson and Bill Murray oh, to, to get multiple ones make sure you hold the control key down as you're clicking golfers there now I got three selected and I can use the single arrow to the right right here which will move the just the golfers I selected over my numbers update I got three less on the inactive side and I got three more on the active side obviously I could go ahead and click save close and I've updated my roster back into club management once again just to take a look at that you can see that you got single arrows which move over whatever you have selected but you also have the double arrows which would move everybody to one side or the other so a public facility in the spring uh, the day before the season starts in April might say let's move double arrow everybody over to inactive and as they come in and pay for their IGA gin member number for the year we can go back in here to club management find them and move them over one by one we can see it's a nice easy count for us we can click save and we're good to go I'm gonna click close it's gonna prompt me to save my changes I don't want to because uh, I want to leave more golfers active than what we had there so when I go back in you can see I still have my 38 now you do this by service as a reminder so I would need to move down to the women's 18 make any necessary changes I have there and then click save once I make a change and click close so that's the way I prefer to activate and inactivate golfers on the software version of the Gin Handicap program. Do it right through club management. Pick the service that you're working with and then you can see and, and toggle them back and forth. Final thing we're going to talk about in this segment is default tees. And you'll recall when we added a golfer and we had that option of a default tee for uh, Bob Golfer and I just we said uh, service default for that which is fine um, what is our service default tee for Bob well going into club management men's 18 is selected right now so I'm working with uh, that particular service and down here on the left you can see the default tee for men right now is the blue set of tees for my home course and when I click on the women's service I have the red set of tees for the ladies as the default and what that means is when the golfer goes in to post a score and they say I played home it's gonna to default to that golfers set of tees next so they don't have to always click I know I played the blacks and if they always play the blacks we probably want to set them to default to the blacks but the majority of the golfers at this club here I say are gonna be playing the blue tees if they're men and playing the red tees if they're ladies we can however make exceptions for that so we'll go back in and look at Bob Golfer again and let's say he's a senior golfer his default set of tees is from the whites he plays a forward set which is fine so we'll go ahead and say okay we save that so when Bob Golfer comes in on the public side next time and posts a score and says home puts the date and all that stuff in and when he's posted up to what set of tees did you play it's gonna already be selected on the white tees for him because that's what it's reading as opposed to Al Golfer who is a uh, a golfer on our men's 18 roster but his service tees or his default tee is the service default it's gonna read back to those blues that we have set so I, I always recommend in club management 
have your default tees for your men and your women set up to the most popular set of tees. Then, for the golfers that do play a different set of tees, you can go in and individually set their default tee in player management. One other way that this comes in handy, uh, for running handicap labels, you'll notice there's a field on there that says course handicap. What that's doing is reading from the golfer's default tee. So if I printed a label for Bob, golfer here in our example, it's going to give him his handicap index on the label, but then it's going to say on the course handicap field, it's going to give him what that index converts to for the white tees because that's his default. And on Al's uh, handicap label, if you print it out for him, it's going to give his index and his course handicap is going to be the blues because that's the default tee there. So that's a little bit more about default tees and settings. And that concludes this segment of our tutorial. If you have any questions over anything I covered in this short video, please feel free to contact the IGA staff. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you at the next video.